So last week we spoke a lot about setting up foundational things. We had a company profile activity that we filled out. We talked about keywords, long tail keywords and such. We're going to apply those things to our sites, of course, but we still need to set a little bit of foundation. Let's say we engage in that long tail keyword strategy and we've got our, mark, uh, our company profile and such and we engage also maybe in social media or blogging and other things that I'll talk about how do we know if it's really all paying off if your efforts are really going anywhere so that's where the webmaster tools come in um, the webmaster tools will give us all of this insight into uh, our, our traffic and um, how long people are staying on our site and all that good stuff That'll be the second thing we look at today. One more foundational thing that I want to talk about is a marketing strategy. Because, again, social media and all of that stuff, um, it doesn't behoove you to really use it if you don't have a goal. So we're, we're going to talk about a marketing strategy. Uh, so let's go to our desktop. If you're not there already, go to the desktop, open the computer window. So we'll open the computer window there. Question? Um, I don't have I don't have access to your monitor, but I can turn on your computer, and that is, that's already on. You can turn on your monitor yourself with this little power button right here. So. The, the folder here of computer, what you then need to do is go to our network location. We saw this previously, and now you're going to go to the network location, classroom data, drive Z. And then go down to my folder. Uh, it's the one called Campus SEO. Open the campus SEO folder. If you were not here last week, this is where you can get the syllabus, uh, the one called syllabus. And we had the we had the company profile, which is this one right here, client company profile. And then we had also the instruction number one, or the sheet number one, Campus SEO one long tail strategy. And a couple of drawings that I did here about the long tail and then answering the question of why. And then um, today what I've got is uh, marketing strategy and webmaster tools. We will look at the marketing strategy first and then webmaster tools. So what you want to do is drag from my folder to your desktop, drag the client marketing strategy, drag it to your desktop. Client marketing strategy, don't just double click it, drag it to your desktop. And we'll come back a little later, but we're also going to get the webmaster tools. If you brought a USB drive today, you can copy them to the USB, and um, you can print them if you'd like also, but the printer's off at the moment until the break. So for the moment, let's look at the client marketing strategy file. Double click that. If you're having any trouble, um, call me over. Anyone, everyone found that, the graphic, I mean that uh, document? As I said last week, what I teach in pretty much all my classes is something that I do in the real world as part of my company for clients. So what I'm showing you in these activities, uh, these are things that we actually do for real clients. And 
charge real money for. So one of the foundational things we do with a brand new client, part of the discovery phase, is we want to get to know as much as we can about that company so that we can do the best job that we can for that, uh, for that, uh, for that client. So one of them is to develop a marketing strategy. Marketing, I'm going to use synonymous with advertising. And so marketing and advertising, I might use them synonymously. And specifically, well, you think of marketing, you think of advertising, you might think of billboards, you might think of the radio, you might think of, um, what else, newspaper advertisements and such. Those are old media. What's an example of new media? Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, all of that social media, social media. So for us, um, one aspect of marketing that we'll talk about is the social media aspect. So this is not just applying to old media, this is applying to new media. At a certain point we'll stop calling it old, uh, we'll stop calling it new media, maybe now already, but uh, we've got Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, all of that stuff. That's another form of, of media, of, of a place to market, a place to advertise. So if you take the, the uh, social media class on Fridays, it's actually full at the moment, so if you're not there already, you might wait for it next time. But uh, in there we talk about using social media to reach more of an audience. We don't know what kind of audience we're reaching unless we have a plan. So let's get to creating this plan, this strategy page two. Again, you don't need to complete this and turn it in. You won't get a grade. You can fill it out. I can look at it if you'd like. I can give you my opinion and such, but this is not any sort of homework that you're turning in. Of course, you can print it out if you'd like, but I give it to you in a Word document so you can write in it. So we've got some questions here. What do you want to accomplish? You have a presence online for a reason. Are you trying to sell something? Are you trying to build awareness? Are you artistic and want uh, people to appreciate your work? Do you have a group you belong to that needs more members? Take a moment to write about what you want to accomplish with your online presence. And your online presence is your website, social media, your email, campaign, whatever. My example, Vic.co wishes to create a powerful social media presence because we want to interact with existing customers and through word of mouth, reach new customers. We want to connect with people on Instagram in a very visual way. So I'm saying here that my company, my, one of my fake companies, Vic.co, um, we want to get customers. You know, it's not, it's not bad for you to define yourself that way. Obviously, if you're in a business, you're in a business to <coughs> run a business to make money. So um, here I'm saying I want customers through word of mouth, that's going to be through social media, through getting followers, through getting likes, building this audience. And then here, I'm saying, well, I want to use Instagram because it's very visual. Or maybe I, I write down, well, I want to use Facebook because everyone's on Facebook. Or I want to use Periscope because I heard that's a hot new thing. I've never used it, but I want to get on Periscope. So defining some of these things early on then is helpful for you to succeed in the future. Again, some of these things might be nebulous. You might have never thought of them before. That's why I'm pre presenting them to you to start to think about them. And I, of course, can help you individually if you need it to understand things a bit more. And as I said previously, I'm going to be couching the class in terms of your business, your company, your product. But again, if you are a nonprofit organization, if you're an artist, if you're a band, if you're putting out yourself out to get a job, this is your online resume and such, it still applies. I just use the terms of business and product and such. Who is your target audience? It's important to focus on a target audience. It's nice to say that everyone would be interested in your product, but it just isn't true in the real world. Who are the people that would like to know about your product? What are their age ranges, genders, economic groups, musical styles? In short, who would care about your product? In essence, we are creating a persona of a potential client. The people who want to hire Vic.co are people that are trendy, but know what they want. They are people that are in their 30s who are successful, own their own company, need a website, and know the value of web design. So let's say my web design company. 
I want to make websites and get paid for it. So I could take anyone, I could take all comers, anyone that contacts me, yes, we'll work together. But if I focus on a particular target audience that I feel I can serve best, things will turn out better. Because, for example, you might have heard of McDonald's and they're putting out their food for everyone, but not everyone likes it. Not everyone likes that food, wants to eat that food. Conversely, Chipotle. Not everyone likes it, not everyone cares about what they're about, not everyone would pay that much for a taco. So you have this persona. Who is this fictional potential client? This is something that takes more effort, but creating this persona, actually writing down a biography of a fictional person is something that is done when you get into deeper marketing. You actually take out a paper and create, okay, Janet Smith, she is a college graduate, lives in La Jolla, likes this music. The reason you're doing that is because then you're starting to build one or two or five personas of target audiences that you're going to then focus on. It's not going to be an abstract thing anymore. It's going to be, I am marketing to Janet. I am marketing to Steven, to actual people that would care about your product, your online presence. How do you find this stuff out? This is a bit of focus grouping or focus testing in that you yourself brainstorm it, you brainstorm it with your company, you brainstorm it with investors, you brainstorm it with you know uh, previous clients and so forth. So this is something that you have to figure out. You have to sit down with the interested parties to figure that out. Uh, I believe I mentioned last week in this class, maybe, that my company had uh, spoken with the um, with one of the owners of, of a bar that is looking for social media because they've been open a month and they haven't gotten that much um, clientele. So when we spoke with them, we asked them a few of these questions. Who's your target audience? And he, and he stopped for a moment. He hadn't really thought about it. He thought, I'm going to run a bar. People are going to come and drink. But... As we started to talk more, he said, well, we're going to be playing this kind of music, serving these kinds of drinks. Therefore, probably our clientele is going to be this group, not that group, because that group wouldn't care about this music, these drinks, this ambiance, etc. So target audience. A couple of years ago also, I, I had uh, an encounter with someone that needed a website and a whole package of, of online presence. And, of course, the question, who's your target audience? And then he said, everyone. Now, that wasn't the right answer because his product was baby strollers. So, no, not everyone. <laughs> not everyone would care about that. He was obviously thinking, everyone that is a parent. But that's still too broad. As we talked more with him, he said, we're going to be focusing on the, the young families, you know, first-time parents, young Latino families. Okay, now you're specifying. Now you've got a target audience that you can market to that you can craft a better message on Facebook, on the radio, on your website, whatever way you're marketing, when you're marketing to a target audience. In the example that I'm giving here again, uh, okay, people that are trendy but know what they want. So they don't want a website that looks like every el everyone else's website. They want a website that looks good, that's in the moment. Um, in their 30s that are successful, that own their own company, there's plenty of young entrepreneurs, that's who we're targeting. Maybe they're flush with venture capital money, good for us. Um, they need a website, and they, and they know the value of web design. And that's not in the abstract, that's a bit more in the concrete. Value as in monetarily. We're going to be dealing with people that know that a website, a good website, would cost easily $5,000. That an e-commerce website would cost seven or $8,000. Not people that, that come that think, well, I heard on TV they'll make a website for me for $250. Why are you charging me $5,000? Well, depending on what you need, that $250 might be perfect. That $250 might be laughable. So, again, we're going to deal with people that know the value of web design, of the product. Sometimes, unfortunately, in this business, people don't realize the value because they might see a piece of technology and then, you know, okay, yeah, this makes sense. This costs $400, $600, whatever. They might say, yeah, that laptop costs $900, $400, whatever. But when you have something abstract and that's not real, like a tweet 
or a website or a shopping cart, people don't believe that it would really cost $8,000 or more. But it does. Any questions so far on these two points? Do you have an aspirational competition? It's good to have role models, both in life and in business. Is there a business you see that makes you think, I want to be like that, or a business that makes you think, I want to do that but better? List a company, person, brand, etc., that you feel is in competition with you, but that you would like to emulate. Why do you want to emulate them? So this is also an important step. You might think you're the only realtor in Imperial Beach. You're not. You might think you're the only um, vegan-friendly pet babysitters, which you're probably not. There's other competition in your niche, even if you think it's really um, detailed. If it's very detailed and specific, then actually you might not even have a target audience. So who are you selling to? But anyway, let's say we assume, yes, you have competition. So part of this, part of uh, the assignment of the, of the discovery phase is figuring out who is your competition. Okay, so we have that bar. We asked who else? What other bars do you think are in competition with you? And he said, oh, uh, such and such. We said, hmm, they're a bit more of a restaurant. But why do you? Why would you say that? He said, "Well, they have the clientele that we're looking for. They have these young, you know, 25 to 35 year olds that are into this kind of music. So it doesn't have to be competition directly, exactly in your niche, but some that might overlap with yours. So that bar, you know, they're not a restaurant; they're a bar. But they feel that this restaurant, because they have good drinks, they have good music, but they're more of a restaurant. They're in competition." And therefore, some of their clientele could be you know, interchangeable between the two businesses. So if you know your competition, then you can do that research, like we did on the websites. We did some websites on the we did some research on the websites. You could do research in other ways too. Are they doing any radio ads? How do they show up on search results? Um, because if we have this competition, aspirational competition aspiring to be like this, uh, we can then position ourselves uh, to do better. My example, Vic.co feels that XY Designs is our aspirational competition because they are well known in the field of web design and their style is unique and modern. So the kind of content, the kind of websites that they create are unique and modern. Well, we're trying to do that too. Uh, we're trying to do it better. Why, how? We'll get to that in a moment, but you need to define who else is in competition with you. What are they doing? How can you do it better? Another example, a restaurant client. Um, he uh, has, uh, the owner has uh, this restaurant that sells traditional Mexican lamb barbecue, barbacoa de borrego. So traditional Mexican lamb barbecue. We asked him, who's your aspirational competition. He said, I want to be like Phil's Barbecue. How many of you heard of Phil's Barbecue before? A lot of people in here. If you haven't, they are uh, a big name in San Diego Barbecue. Um, I've been there a couple of times. I didn't think it was amazing. It was good. Some people swear by it. Some people think, no, Crooms down on mm, Broadway is better. Everyone's got an opinion. So, but they're doing American style barbecue you know, Texas or Kansas or whatever. They're doing American style. How is this client that does Mexican lamb, slow roasted lamb barbecue, how does it relate? And he said, well, I see that uh, Phil's barbecue is synonymous with barbecue in San Diego. Someone comes to San Diego, where should I eat barbecue? A lot of people are going to say Phil's barbecue. They have a wait time. There's a spot that where you right outside the parking lot that where you stand you see a little sign that says 45 minute wait at this point like Disneyland mm -hmm. so um, he wants to be like that synonymous with the food he sells in San Diego or the region he wants to have uh, a lot of people lined up ready to come into the restaurant he wants to to be uh, like them but in his own in his own niche 
At the moment, he does. He is getting more and more fame. He is becoming more important in the culinary scene of what he's in. And uh, he does have a wait on the weekends, but Phil's has a wait Monday through Sunday. So he wants that as well. And that's the competition. That's the goal. So once you define that, okay, that if that's the goal, what do I need to do to reach that goal? Vision statement. A mission statement tells the world where you stand. A vision statement tells the world where you're going. Write a statement that makes predictions about what you want to accomplish as a company or brand. You may set a time horizon, like five years. Vic.co will be known for providing eye-catching web design for San Diego's most elegant restaurants. Okay, so here in the example, I'm saying, well, I'm going to focus on restaurants. Web design, restaurants, previously I said 30-year-olds, understand the value of it. So I'm building this persona, this target, this goal. And we're saying we will be known for providing eye-catching web design. I didn't put a, a time horizon. You don't need to, but that's one of the goals. Um, that's our vision. That's what we will be in the future. Right now, what we're trying to do from the previous handout Right now, what we're trying to do is put the best web design out there. Our goal will be, well, we, we will be concentrating on restaurant websites, elegant restaurants, eye-catching design. That's the future. That's the vision. So that's the difference between mission and vision. Mission is where you currently are. Vision is where you're going. And in order, again, to get to that goal to reach that competition and surpass them, you need a USP, unique selling proposition. What do you provide your customers that no one else can? What makes you stand out from the rest? How do you uniquely solve their problems? Answer the question of why. That is why would a client hire you? So we talked about that previously with the concentric circles. What, how, and why? What is the product? Web design. How is well? We're going to make a a word uh, a WordPress website that's fully e-commerce capable. Why? Well, as I said previously, um, we offer something that the others don't. In this case, Victor Co is based in San Diego, and many from our team graduated from Southwestern College, San Diego State University, and UCSD. We therefore know the local culture. We can create compelling websites that cater to San Diego companies. So what is it about our company that speaks to a potential client? Here, this can obviously be crafted per client, but if you've got a persona, it should usually synchronize almost all the time. What I mean is, previously I said, okay, 30-year-olds that are trendy, entrepreneurs and such, probably they went to college. So if we're saying that the people that are in my company also went to college, local colleges in San Diego, that could resonate with them. And I'm saying, we know the local culture. We can get uh, outsourced websites very, very affordably, $25 an hour from all over the world. Um, we can then maybe get web designers from Seattle or LA or New York, sure. But since we graduated from here, we grew up here, we know the culture, we know the Southern California, the San Diego culture, we can create something that also resonates with that particular client that has a restaurant here on Main Street, San Diego. And that's what we're saying. We're catering to San Diego companies. Yes, we can make a, web a website for any kind of company. But we've got a persona, we've got competition, we've got a vision, therefore we're targeting this niche. And then in the total, in the totality of this, this is to inform our marketing strategy. Once we are defining these things, we can then start to apply this to our website, to social media, to printed advertising, to radio advertising. All of that's another big discussion. But this class, it's, it's a disservice to simply talk about SEO in that. Let's talk about keywords. Let's add it to our website. Let's do this and that. If you don't have a goal, if you don't have a foundation, if you don't have a vision, and that's the SEM, Search Engine Marketing. 
So in this class, I couple them both. Any questions so far? So again, this might be pretty, uh, pretty nebulous to think about at the moment, but it is something you should think about at some point. Maybe you've already got a, a company and a website, and it's a really nice website, but as you start to think about this, how does your website synchronize with what I've got here? If you're just thinking of creating a website and an online presence, then great. Start to think about this first, and then uh, take the next step to go online. It's like a carpenter. Um, she's going to build something, but without blueprints or an idea, is that birdhouse really going to turn out correctly? Is that bridge really going to turn out correctly without a plan, without a foundation? So um, if there's no questions on these, on this, we'll move on to the other topics. Again, you can print this during the break, but uh, at this point, we'll, uh, we'll move on then.